Good afternoon, guys, from San Felipe, Mexico. It's our last day here, and uh, it's a little cloudy, but the temperatures have also uh, cooled down nicely. You guys may remember Tom and Anita from our uh, one of our last trips to Mexico. I think the last time you saw him in one of our videos, he was tying me up in zip ties. Yep, one of those stories. And this big guy is buddy. Good luck getting him to hold still. Just a big puppy. Hey, Tom. Hey. How are you doing? Good. You, you guys packing up to go? Yep. All right. Yep. Well, Tom and Anita are heading down the Baja again, all the way to La Paz. Yep. Yep, to spend the winter. And uh, yeah, just been great hanging out together. And you know, last time we first met and ran into each other here in San Felipe, you know, what are the odds? I guess they're pretty good. Yeah. But yeah. Well, so yeah. here we are. Not too bad. Yep. But we're kind of a special destiny with the social unrest. Oh, uh, <laughs> yeah. There's a little bit of a. Uh, there's a situation again. Yeah, I don't know. Like when the two of us get together, situations happen. But the fishermen are experiencing a moratorium for protection of endangered species. It's very political. I'm not taking any sides because I don't know enough about it. But yesterday, uh, they there were protesters on the north end of town blocking the road and protesters on the south end of town. Well, only like 1% of the traffic really heads south, but the uh, northbound traffic was completely stopped and to the point where they wouldn't even allow emergency services through. Like there was a lady at the clinic up the road by the uh, expat community and she had like a cardiac condition and she had to get up to the States. So I don't know, I hope, you know, everything turned out well for her, but. Why didn't you close the door? There's all the trash in there. Oh, well, just trash, gosh. What's Tom, trash? come on, why didn't you close the door? Yeah. You I should know. know better by now. I, I, I know, I'm, I'm a pretty, very bad person. Yes. Uh, yeah, I'm, yes. I know. <laughs> so something unusual, it's not going to be a full-blown tour, but you guys are from Europe mm -hmm. and you travel in this Class A motorhome. And I'm not going to promote stereotypes or anything, but most people from Europe generally don't pick a 35 foot maybe? Four, yeah. Yeah, 34 <laughs> foot Class A motorhome. <laughs> yeah, that's true. Um, I, it's goes back to my youth time uh, so about five years ago or almost 50 I don't remember huh youth time yeah. oh, let, let me close the yeah door. it's time no one sees the, the trash <laughs> <laughs> perfect timing yeah uh, no so I, I loved US cars since I was whatever 16 or so and um, the first time was about whatever 15 years ago a friend of mine just bought a, one of the Chevy, uh, Chevy G20 vans with a big sofa in there and so I thought wow these things are pretty cool so I thought maybe the RVs are even way more comfortable so um, when we started the travel for me or for us was clear to start in the US and I thought okay when we're starting in the US of course with a US RV so uh, save the money to ship an RV from Europe over to the US. We just thought, okay, let's buy one in the US and we actually just bid on one on eBay. <laughs> what we've never seen with the company, we don't know if this is a real company or not. And we just throw a nice five figure amount overseas without seeing the RV. And uh, yeah, I figured out the OE was nice, but still kind of crap, but the value was okay. So we traded in this RV and paid a little bit more and just bought this one and so i like your tiffin oh i i like it too it's um pretty nice yeah no and well, issues it's at diesel all. so in case yeah. you guys don't know they do make class a motorhomes that are not diesel pushers so this is a fred uh -huh. front end diesel and you uh don't need ultra low sulfur diesel or anything uh, of that nature correct um yes and no they're kind of not really sure so the um what's the comment said um we should have ultra low sulfur diesel but if we don't have it we just need uh, to speed the engine a little bit more up so just idling or just going through uh, city traffic jams it's not recommended with uh, the other diesel but uh, what we, year is this one uh, 2008 
Okay, but you're right on the fringe of ultra low sulfur diesel or regular diesel or just low sulfur diesel. Yeah, we we tank, we fill it up with regular diesel too and come and said it's fine as long as you are hitting the highway and if you're not just creeping around in the city. Mm -hmm. So if the engine idles up on a pretty high, yeah, high <laughs> for diesel <laughs> it's yeah. just a RPM then you're fine. Okay. So, and uh, you also just had a uh, service, mm -hmm. like a full-blown kind of maintenance package yep. done when you were crossing through Mexicali, yes. which is in Mexico, mm -hmm. and you got an amazing deal for like a full-blown service. Oh yeah, absolutely. We've got, um, let's see, oil change, inclusive filter, uh, fuel filter change, and the fuel filters for the diesel are pretty expensive. Everything's um, more expensive for a diesel. Yeah. <laughs> A uh, full chassis loop, a uh, brakes check, a uh, coolant uh, refreshment. Oh, and they cleaned up uh, all the dust from the out of the generator. Um, Did they do a transmission service? Uh, no, we no. haven't done okay. let done this, but they, they can do, but we haven't done this. All right, so you got a very full service. Yeah. And how much did it cost in US dollars? <laughs> Roughly. Uh, roughly inclusive parts and labor and all together it was about 160, 170 US dollars. <laughs> you can't even get an <laughs> oil change on a motorhome for yeah. that in the States. Yeah, so the price is pretty reasonable and the mechanics down here in Mexico, um, they are pretty good trained. They're doing it since whatever. And this is a years. dealership that you're going to. You're not oh, going yeah. to a a garage on the side of the road. No, 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 no. It was not a kind of a, a um, backstreet store or something. It was a main dealership from a pretty big company, one of the most expensive actually. And we, yeah, just paid about 160, 170 bucks. That's great. Tom, I never intended when I was coming out here right now mm -hmm. for this to be like an interview or anything, but it is turning into an interview because we've never really had a chance to talk to the camera and mm -hmm introduce you guys aside from when you're tying me up in zip ties but it was a nice experience too huh? that was that was <laughs> a very memorable experience and the next time we need to try it with duct tape um, but you were kind of too too pussy like i don't know if you say it here in the well, US. well you know i may <laughs> have been a little pussy to not want to put duct tape on my arms but you shave your arms so it wouldn't have been an issue no. for you <laughs> see but, this is the fun you have with friends Humor is a must in life. Yeah. So you guys do not have a tow vehicle like nope. many folks. Uh, and this is a very European method of getting around, mm -hmm. would be utilizing a motorcycle. Yeah, absolutely. So we um, decided constantly against a tow vehicle because even with this, for us, monster, because 34 foot is for Europeans, uh, <laughs> it's damn huge. I know the US guys may be laughing. I said, oh, huge is just 42 and upward, but 34. But when in Rome, we have the space over here to have this kind of a rig. So yeah. why not take advantage of it? Like you said, yeah. you know, when in Rome. Yeah. So, um, so we decided against the tow vehicle because um, to being a little bit more flexible, to can just drive around a little bit more easy. So we just choose um, a motorcycle and yeah, I cannot unfold it, but... Oh, we don't like, need to uncover it. Like, like you see it on the thread. Yeah. It's a dirt bike or it's an adventure bike. Yep. It's a Honda XR. <laughs> Jeez, buddy. Hi. It's a Honda XR 650. You're such a puppy dog, aren't you? <laughs> Yes, and that tail is vicious. But that is a great way of getting around. You guys can Absolutely. both hop on. Yeah. You can uh, do reconnaissance missions yeah. on the roads because, you know, we're obviously limited on a two-wheel drive motor home where we can go. Yeah. And also, uh, you guys have grander plans of traveling the rest of the world in an expedition vehicle. Yeah, so the plan is maybe next year i guess maybe in the summer around next year we're going to sell uh this rig and we want to buy one of the uh mercedes-benz military trucks with the cabin on the back so the kind of expedition yeah. rv style and uh, going around the world with this one because this one is definitely limited to roads or gravel paved or gravel roads um and because of the size and the overhang it's yeah even in dips sometimes here on mexico we're scratching uh with the with the uh, 
back end of the of the uh, trailer or carrier yeah the street so it's well and you also really feel cheated when you can't get to these amazing campsites yes we have encountered so many places that we want to go but we just can't yep that's we why do. we're shopping for an expedition vehicle yep. in the near future yep. we too it's kind of uh, uh annoying when you're just being on a nice road and the road gets more and more sandy and sandy and it need to make the decision no i don't want to dig in with about twenty-five thousand pounds mm -hmm. and get a shovel and try to thank get you for putting out. it into pounds for me instead of kilograms, kilograms. you're welcome i appreciate it a lot <laughs> i know <laughs> uh, yeah so um therefore we have the motorbike to just go around and um yeah and of course that's our website for the yep. travel blog for those guys who maybe speak or understand german you can there follow us on the site. So now the million dollar question that everybody wants to know, uh, are you guys gazillionaires? Are you working? So oh. what's the deal? You want to head from Europe to North America, uh -huh. get an American RV. What's your deal, Tom? Um, um, uh, we have an online business or um, different online businesses and uh, real estates uh, over in Germany. So we have a kind of a passive income and our online business are set on autopilot. Um, so we just created once online courses uh, regarding travel hacks as one of the course how to travel for less and do having win-win situations on the road. Uh, then another uh, course is about podcasting, how to set up your own podcast, how you can make money out of your podcast and all the stuff. And um, all these courses are just complete set up on autopilot. So if the customer finds the sales page, whatever, figure out, yeah, that's what I want to have. They're paying it. The system send them their credentials, their login credentials. And so they're good for go. Yeah. And we're just receiving the money. And our team throws every day a couple of euros into Facebook ads or Google AdWords. And uh, we got the factor X out of it. Yeah, residual income. Yeah. Doing the work one time and get paid for the next years for the same work what you just did. Okay, big lesson here. We believe it, we practice it. They believe it, they practice it. Residualized income, one-time effort, repeated dividends. Uh, real estate, online businesses, that is the future. That's gonna give you the freedom to travel like we do. Yeah, Yep. absolutely. And you know, emphasis on the internet. And, and it's not rocket science. That's important because a lot of people, they're telling me, oh yeah you are a nerd you can do this and I, every time i said no i'm definitely not a <laughs> you're nerd. a soldier actually yeah i'm, I'm a former soldier i'm a former <laughs> officer i'm pretty good at shooting and carrying big backpacks but that's nothing what you qualified for a residual income nope. so um yeah it's a, it really do. is a mindset yes. of just doing things that are you know residualized <laughs> it's yeah. simple enough yeah uh and it's what? an old business. Yeah. Just every author who wrote a book in the past, it's kind of a residual income. So yeah. if you have something to share, start with writing an ebook and selling it for two ninety nine on Amazon or whatever. It's of course two ninety nine it's not making you a millionaire, or possibly not. But if a couple of hundred people buying these, it's a nice income too. Well anybody that does YouTube videos knows that the there's a pie. The pie is really big. You don't need to have a slice of the pie to make a living. All you need, because it's such a vast world, it's just a crumb off the edge. And you are making a very respectable and comfortable living. One last question, Tom. What advice would you give people who live in Europe and want to come to the United States to travel, not just the United States, I should say North America, mm -hmm. in an RV? What's the one bit of advice you'd give them? One big advice, uh, looking for nice res uh, resources like your YouTube channel. I just want to say your podcast channel, but yeah. uh, it's actually YouTube channel. <laughs> um, to Just to learn all the little things where you can save money, stay safe on the road, um, how to operate these things. And um, yeah, I guess the resources, just find nice resources from people who've done this not just from people who are telling how it works i i would check who where who are the people uh, who are living this what i want to do and get in touch with them learn from these guys uh via a youtube channel via coachings or whatever great tom it's always a pleasure anita 
it's always fun getting to see you guys <laughs> and you know we never know where we're gonna run into each other again that's true yep i Maybe guess in germany somewhere in the world <laughs> somewhere on planet earth i'm guessing yes. yeah. but like i said before the best part about being a traveler is when you meet up with people it's never goodbye it's always yeah. until we meet again and you never know where it's gonna be yeah. this one just so happened to be back in san felipe yeah. but i'm pretty sure when we're heading down to la paz there will we will meet definitely some new travelers and i'm also pretty sure we will meet some travelers that we already knew yes um because this is kind of a winter spot where a lot of travelers just hang around for yeah. a couple of weeks a month that's pretty cool baja is an amazing place to spend yes, the winter definitely Okay, well, I know you guys probably clicked on this video to uh, see us talk with our friends Tom and Anita, but this is our last day in Mexico and we host travel vlogs. So the rest of this video is gonna be like one of our normal vlogs. Well, this is one of our favorite restaurants and to be honest i don't even know the name of it but it's just on uh, one of the corners here in the malecon and we've had amazing meals here okay i remember their name now the taco factory oh my this is an entire <laughs> picture i mean there's like no uh, ice there. <laughs> oh no oh these are fresh margaritas Mm. Good stuff. Wow, look at all that. There's <laughs> we have a problem, Houston. I know. Can you handle this? Oh, I can handle it. Okay, there's no drinking and driving in our house. So dad is going to be taking the wheel. But I also don't think I should be drinking and flying either. But the Sea Shepherd boats are out there. And it's a great subject matter to get some drone footage of. Benjamin is at, but lunch is here, and he's looking out. We got this the last time we were here, but we got it with fish, and this time we got it with meat. So there's cheese on top, and then I see carne asada, I see chicken, and then they serve it with fresh tortillas. And of course, the margaritas are flowing. I hope that footage turns out. It was an 11,200 foot flight away. Wow, so you barely need it. Exactly. Lunch looks great. Yeah, this is a three-person dish. It is uh, 320 pesos, and if you get this, it could be like an appetizer for six people or a main dish for three, easily. And the pitcher is finally empty. One last margarita. So do you need to walk the dog, or does the dog need to walk you? I think someone else should take the dog. Come on, dog. I hope you enjoyed the interview with our friends. And uh, be sure to subscribe. Tomorrow we'll be heading back towards the border and crossing into the United States. Thanks for joining us, and we'll see you then. <laughs>